All right, good morning, everyone. <laughs> I was very enthusiastic. <laughs> so um, I'm Kate Miffin. I am the chair for Learning Design Summer Camp this year. And I'd like to welcome you all. Thank you for joining us. Um, so Summer Camp is our annual event where we come together as a community. And it's an opportunity to um, take a step back and think big picture, to share ideas and practices, and um, thinking about what's coming up next. So, um, and I think there, you know, in your email before coming here, you got a, a question about what are you hoping to get out of camp? And I think you could see from this word cloud um, a lot about of what people expect from this. So inspiration, innovation, um, experience, community. I don't know what LDS, LDSE not means, but, um, you know, <laughs> not. <laughs> But um, but it, it, it's typically, you know, it's meant to be a fun, casual event where we uh, get together. Um, this year's theme is On the Horizon, uh, Think, Plan, Make. And there'll be three distinct um, sessions dedicated to each of these subtopics, um, which really kind of closely parallel the learning design process. So we're going to um, explore some new practices, some new tools, and some ideas, and get a chance to revisit some old um, uh, proven ideas um, as we we meet together in groups today. So um, our planning team uh, worked really hard putting together this theme and this program and I'd like to recognize them now. Um, it, it was a really a collaborative effort to put together this event. Um, I'd also like to thank in advance all of our speakers, facilitators, and panelists from the community who are participating um, over the next two days. Um, and in addition, I'd like to recognize um, the people that contributed that really helped to make camp special. So um, like Dean and Trisha Blackstock and Jeff who performed this morning, uh, Sherwin Saul, Casey Fenton, uh, TK Lee, Bevan Hernandez. Um, they all really helped to make, add those little special touches to camp that makes it a very different and special event. So some housekeeping items. <laughs> Um, and here, I really I need to refer to my notes. Um, so a couple of things. First, um, there is no food or beverage allowed in Foster. Um, so if you could please be considerate of that. Last year, we got in trouble. Um, so um, you know, please be respectful of the spaces that we're in. We're clearly growing, outgrowing the space a little bit. So we'll be exploring new venues next year. But um, Foster has been a really great place for us over the past couple of years. So um, please be mindful of that. Um, Lunch this afternoon is together. We'll be meeting in the business atrium. Um, and then tomorrow, it's um, lunch on your own with meal cards that'll be provided. So please remember to check in in the morning. You'll have to register you know, again to get your meal card. Um, if you have bags that you don't want to bring to lunch, man will be open, and there will be somebody um, in there. But I'd recommend there are also lockers down in the Knowledge Commons on the other side of the library where you can leave your bag so you don't have to carry it to um, lunch. Um, and then this is just a reminder that um, at the end of the day to return to Foster from your breakout sessions for the wrap up. Now there are two special announcements I'd like to ask um, people to come up for. So if Angie, if you wanna come up first. So I just wanted to point this out to everyone. You'll see these signs hang around um, as you move in and out through the sessions through the next two days. Um, scan the codes and participate. We're using Padlet, so when you scan the code, it'll take you to a Padlet and um, just kind of read. And um, there'll be various questions. And by participating in these, you will have an opportunity to win a chance to wear Google Glasses. So um, that is kind of the the motivation and why you want to do this. Plus, it's fun. Um, do you Thank you. Um, and another technology we're going to be exploring and experimenting with um, at camp is iBeacon. So I'm going to ask Chris Millay to come up and explain a little bit about that. So as you guys all noticed, uh, there's tons of construction in, in, the, uh, in the library. The second floor is sort of being demolished. So because of that, the, the spaces that you'll be in throughout the day are sort of scattered all throughout the library. So we decided to use iBeacons, which is sort of like indoor GPS, to help you find your way. Uh, so if you would like to experiment with the technology, you can go to, uh, it's linked within the Yammer group, but it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash P-S-U places. If you have an iOS device, an iPhone or an iPad, you can download that. 
open up the app and as you're walking around the library, there's various little beacons scattered out throughout the library as you're walking around and they'll help you find your way. So check it out and let us know how it works for you. Thanks. Yeah, did I, did I say it too fast? <laughs> that's, that's just how I roll. Uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash PSU places. I'm just gonna wait for you guys all to type it in. No, just let me know if any, any you got any problems with it. Try it out, and uh, thanks. Um, so a couple of other final things. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be lunching today in the business atrium. So here's a map. It's a um, fairly short walk, but look for um, some of the camp organizers to who will be leading groups over um, as well. Um, we are this PNL building, and we're heading over there across from the Arboretum. Um, also, one of the additional um, activities as part of camp, there are a couple of learning space tours that are happening this evening right at the end of camp. So they begin, um, you'll leave here at 4.30, and they'll be wrapped up by 5.15. So whether it'll be an early evening if you just wanted to um, check out one of these spaces while you're here. So the um, three options are one as the Millennium Science Complex. Um, then there's the Morning Star Solar Home that's actually out behind the stadium. And then finally, the Make Space, which is a little um, maker space downtown. So please check the LDSC Yammer group for signups. And I also believe that somebody will be tweeting the link to sign up as well. All right. So as Angie mentioned, we have a drawing for um, the opportunity to wear Google Glass for part of the event. <laughs> we have a Vanna. <laughs> I'm going to pick the names now. Okay, our first winner for this morning is Ryan Klinger. Don Peters. Daniel Foster. <laughs> Larkin Hood. And Sarah Stager. So those five names, if you can meet in the media commons um, during the first break. So at the end of the session, you meet there, and there will be a little brief training slash tutorial. And then you'll, um, you'll have the glass until the first break during the part two of the day. All right. So and with that, um, I'm going to invite Sherwin Saul to come up. He's going to kick things off for us this morning. Sherwin is a programmer in ETS and the Advanced Learning Projects team. And he works on things like the One Button Studio, Mirror, um, and L3, the badging platform. But he's a man of many talents, and he's going to share with us this morning. How much do I love Sprite? A lot. Now, let me stop. Um, I brought this up here just to uh, talk about something real quick before I wrap. Um, there's a guy, his name is, um, I think it's Arthur C. Clarke. And um, he's, he's like a kind of amazing dude. And um, he, uh, he has these three laws about the future. I think one of them is something about like, if you're old and you talk about the future, it's probably going to be wrong or something like that. Um, I forgot what the second one is. Um, uh, what is it? If you oh, oh yeah, um, oh yeah, I forgot. But the third one is the one I wanted to talk about. <laughs> it basically says it basically says um, um, any advancedly sufficient technology is indistinguishable from mag magic. It's like indistinguishable, right? And um, 
that kind of caught me. I like to, I'll, I'll change it up and say it's indistinguishable from something that's supernatural, something that's more than natural, right? So um, I need some, some volunteers, maybe about two or three. Anybody wants to come up here? Um, I'll give you 10 seconds. If no one comes up, then I'll be, OK, there you go. I like you. Come on. I see another one. Um, OK, and that's it, three. That's it, that's it, that's it. Because I'm going to be taking all this Sprite home with myself. Now, I'm just playing. Um, you guys take one, two, three, four, five, and try to do that. Don't knock mine over. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. So, of course, be quiet though. <laughs> you messing me up, you messing me up right now. Because if any of you guys looked at YouTube, you already know the difference. Of... Oh, okay, 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 all right, so. I, but you're a scientist. No, nah, I'm just playing. I'm just, don't don't hit me now. Don't don't hit me. All right, all right. So I'll tell you what the secret is after I finish rapping. But the reason why I brought this up is um, everybody's laughing. Everybody's into it. Everybody wants to know why this is the case. Why not get that kind of enthusiasm and curiosity into the young people or even the older people who want to learn, right? There's a lot of different things that we, we do, and there's a lot of different, you're still trying, right? There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of different things that we do, um, and we kind of take like the fun out of it. You know, like physics is fun, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to show the fun, right? Because you're just showing equations and stuff. So, you know, oh, okay, okay. It still ain't gonna work, but okay, okay. So what you can do, you can have all three of those sprites if you'd like. Nah, everybody could take one if you want. If you don't, I'm going to drink them because, again, I do love Sprite. Um, but that was just a little. I can tell. Yes, yes. Because this one's. This one's? Almost empty. Oh. And that's the reason why I could do that. Full. Now, I said I was going to say it at the end of the round, but um, nah, nah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Now it's cool, but thank you for coming up. Give them a thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So before I start rhyming, I, I, on this side, when I point to you, I want you to say think. In the middle, I want you to say plan. Over here, I want you to say sorry, make. Right, right. All right. So okay, you guys are horrible. All right. Better. All right. So we're gonna try to do this with some rhythm. <laughs> All right. All right, so it's going to be think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. All right, try to remember that. All right? <laughs> Can you cue the music, please? <laughs> oh, I like that piano. It's nice. It's like some 90s kind of hip-hop type of thing. All right. All right. All right, all right. The top of the precipice, the best of the best of us, the dream one team, no separating from the rest of us. There's nothing stressing us, everybody requesting us. Problems, we solve them, expecting nothing less of us. Impossible made possible, just another day. Contemplating, innovate in many different ways. Fascination, imagination, consistent aids, and loose what we produce, the future consistently made. Eyes, realism, make reality the mission. Wishing your system and the vision was in collision. Envision your vision, hope you not missing. Listen, your decision made with the precision of an incision. Feel what I'm saying? Listen to that music playing. I'm not playing, embrace the case and weigh in. Don't be waiting on anybody to define your station in life. Reverse the stripe and keep praying. Then think, plan, make. 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 Come on. Think, plan, make. You got to think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. Y'all want me to rhyme? You want me to keep rhyming? Plan, make. Think, plan, make. I'll do another one. 
So you been sent on a mission of odds against you. Now you start to realize that's why God sent you. You thinking you not ready, he couldn't have meant you. You been preparing for the mission because everything you've been through. You ready to speak the word and create reality. You do it for the love and definitely not the salary. The money, fame, fortune, that don't really matter. Be actually and factually, you on point exactly. Ready for the game and steady with the aim. Heavy on the name because I'm ready for a change. No longer following the one that led me in the shame. Berating out the box can't get me in the frame. Let me make it plain and lay it on your brain. It's so heavy, I'm going to have to lay it down with a crane. But when I pick it up, I don't strain. About now I know you want me to explain. So think, plan, make. 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 Come on, think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. Come on, think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. Think, plan, make. You can lower it down. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are pretty good at the end. You guys are pretty good at the end. All right, all right. All right, thank you so much. Can we have another round of applause for Sherwin? <laughs> Certainly kicking us off in the spirit of camp. Um, and next I'd like to invite uh, Kyle Bowen, who is the new director of ETS, who's gonna open uh, with some opening remarks. Good morning, good morning. My name is Kyle Bowen. For those of you who haven't had a chance to meet yet, I'm a really warm and fuzzy guy. So if you have any questions during the course of the day, please feel free to let me know. I wanted to take a few minutes this morning to talk about some of the challenges and opportunities that we have kind of in looking forward. Uh, you know, we can't talk about learning, especially in higher education, without talking about symbolism. Right now, certainly, we associate symbols like these with most of our learning. But the challenge is, is that these symbols lack a certain fidelity. Right? Industry-wide, we these same symbols are used, but at the same time, there's no definition for what exactly is an A. Right? We've all earned an A before, but we just worked really hard to get it, and we all earned A's before where maybe we didn't have to work quite as hard to get it, right? So we know that there's not a common necessarily definition between them, and, and that's like so many of the other symbols that we see in our lives. That Symbols like this one, where you'll find this on a hand dryer in a restroom, where most believe that if you push the button, that'll dispense hot air, whereas others believe that if you push the button, it dispenses bacon, right? <laughs> Take, for example, this symbol that most believe warns of electrocution, whereas others suggest that there are dangers in wearing leisure suits. Or this symbol that appears on the dashboard of your car, right? When this light comes on, most people believe that your car is leaking oil. But other confused drivers wonder, I didn't even know my car could leak gravy. <laughs> you see, because it looks like a gravy boat. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> see, this is how it manifests. When I graduated from college, I got one of these, right? A transcript that articulated everything that I had done and how I had quote unquote learned during that process. And what always struck me interesting about the transcript is that it bears a striking resemblance to one of these, right? <laughs> Although, interestingly enough, most universities have a much stricter return policy <laughs> on their transcripts. <laughs> well, what do you buy at Walmart, right? That's, yes. <laughs> So this, and this creates for us the opportunity to explore the experience of learning. This becomes the differentiator. So if we're going to recognize learning with a set of symbols that don't have necessarily an agreed definition, then the differentiator between us is everything else that goes on. That experience that you have is part of learning, whether it be inside or outside of the classroom. So in other words, our opportunity in here is to think about learning in all of its forms. But this then, because our students come to us with a unique set of personalities, right? A unique set of ideas about what learning should be, this creates for us the first world problems of learning. 
right? Uh-oh, she knows where this is going. <laughs> so for example, you have at IMDJ when you can't find a comfortable seating position in class, right? We've all faced this one. Or, yeah, at Black Sheep VT, VT needs a class for online shopping. Maybe if I had a designated shopping time, I would pay attention to my Chinese prof, right? <laughs> These are innovative learning models, I guess. At Natalie Evans 52, I ran into my professor on campus, now I have to show up to her class. <laughs> right? These indeed are the first world problems of learning. And the greatest challenge I think that faces a lot of students in our classrooms is, I literally have the worst wedgie of my life, but I can't pick it because I'm in class. <clears throat> if you're getting the worst wedgie of your life in college, your wedgie requirements in high school were just not rigorous enough. See, this is how we have to begin to think about our students and how, in terms of how are we providing a different experience, right? Moving at how do we take advantage of the technology, the tools they already have, the things, the ideas that they bring to us, how do we take advantage of that in an effort to provide a greater experience? So in, in other words, we have to look forward in terms of what's next, right? What are the things that we get into plan for or look towards now? And some of these are already in process, but I just want to kind of highlight a few of these is just a way to say, you look, as we move through the day, we think about, think, plan, make. How does that get applied towards what is emerging in terms of learning technologies? Certainly credentials are changing how we think about the symbols of learning, right? We can begin to provide additional information or additional data that supports that learning experience and provide evidence of learning. We can think differently about you can always find the proud Trekkies in any group, <laughs> right? That's where half the audience is laughing, the other half is like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why is that guy so pale? I don't understand. <laughs> Analytics begin to change how we understand what's going on. What it helps us do is understand what can't be understood. Right now, critics have suggested that analytics create what is called the Walmartification of learning. But really, it doesn't. So it, yes, statistics are fallible. In actuality, all statistics are wrong. But some are useful, right? And that's what we have to see as the opportunity in analytics is that it can provide us insights into something that can't necessarily be witnessed directly. 3D printing is another area. This is an emergent area, <clears throat> right? But this is one of those spaces where it has applications across the spectrum of learning. In the humanities and in the STEM, we see applications for this, and this is a technology where there's new opportunity because there's not a ton of development going on in this space right now, right? It's still at what we would call it the fridge, right? It really hasn't hit its peak, and so this is an opportunity where we can begin to look at how do we bring this kind of technology to a new level of scale? Also thinking about our learning spaces, right? How do we look at the learning spaces as a platform for learning, right? As opposed to just a replicated space where people sit while they're learning. So how do we use the space to influence what goes on, right? Think about it as like a car wash for knowledge, right, that envelops the student in that, in that process. Then also, one that's really become apparent to me recently is around eSports, right? If you haven't explored this, this idea of, of, of gaming, of, of video gaming as kind of a legitimate uh, uh, athletic experience, it's worth looking into because it's massive and there's a lot of money at stake. And even a cursory review of students who are already broadcasting uh, their video game playing at Penn State finds that there are already some 20 channels of students already doing this today. And that's just a cursory evaluation of, of how this has happened. And so what, how this works is that students, in the course of their game playing, they broadcast it online for the world to view. And, so, and as part of that, they create communities and they also compete in this. Robert Morris University a few weeks ago announced that they were offering athletic scholarships to video gamers, right? So this is an emergent concept in terms of our students are already doing this. So the question becomes, how do we leverage this to create a better experience for our students? So when looking at these kinds of ideas, again, the focus is on how do we create that better experience, not by seeking out or trying to identify those students who are struggling and lift them up or, or the ones who are, who are likely not to do well, but rather, how do we raise the ceiling? How do we help the best students be even better. In other words, how do we find the Waldos? But then again, it's not just one Waldo, but how do we find the Waldos amongst a sea of Waldos? Right, because there's this new 
model for learning, right, that exists not just in the classroom, not just online, it exists in kind of bricks and clicks at the same time. It exists in the networking connections between students and on the phones in their pockets, right? This is the new classroom where learning happens. And so what we can do is take that next step, right, provide a new generation of technology that helps our students get there. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I hope you enjoy summer camp. Uh, if I can do anything for you during the course of the camp, please let me know. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Kyle. Um, so with that, that officially wraps up our introduction for the day. So I'm going to invite Stephanie up to um, begin part one of summer camp. Thank you, everyone.